Thanks for staying with us. Joining the show is Pastor Lumide Emmanuel. He'll be discussing how to survive this challenging economy or, and how to create wealth in the present day Nigeria due to all the economic difficulties that many Nigerians are facing in this season. To join the conversation, you can call us on 0810-764-1679 or you can call us on 090-241-63440. Pastor Lumide Emmanuel, you know that there is something going on in night. Like everybody is like it has bar everybody. That's mm -hmm. what, what you say. It has hit. It has hit everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah, I seem to. Um, the Nigerians are faced with multiple challenges. We have the challenge of the inflation. The cost of everything has gone up. Food prices. Mm. The official figure is different from the figure that Nigerians are feeling. Mm -hmm. Nigerians are experiencing a 100-200% increase in the cost of daily consumables that you cannot avoid. The cost of um, fuel up, which has affected transportation. The cost of um, um, dollar has gone, is floating. So it means today you are buying for seven something, tomorrow you are buying for it over 800 naira. And all of these things put together is putting a huge burden on Nigerians. And we're seeing it cranky people everywhere. How do we deal with this economy? Can we still create wealth within this economic structure? Well, thanks for having me. Nice to be here again. Um, it's very, very important for us to realize that the situation is right there. Um, there is no doubt about that. But we also have to face reality of the um, environment that we operate in. So the first thing I want us to understand is that it's not going to get better. So that we will not keep having these unrealistic expectations. If you look back at our democracy since 1999, we have never had a better government. So go think back 23 years. It keeps getting worse. It keeps getting worse. It has never gotten better. So we need to have that reality behind us while we are looking at the future. Because you see, life is lived forward but understood backwards. We have never had a better government. So to believe or expect that, oh, this one will be better than the former one, you are going to be setting up yourself for trouble. So that's number one mindset you need to have. Mm. It's not going to get better. Even when we look at it prophetically, darkness will cover the earth, gross darkness the people. So it's not going to get better. But we're going to go through what has happened with this new government is that they are making the right decisions. Now, the right decisions they are making is going to make things tougher. But if we are able to weather the storm, there is light at the end of the tunnel. With reference to subsidy, I wish, I wish that with reference to subsidy, we have all accepted the 2012 verdict. Mm. Because Sanusi was crying. Well, was it Okonji or Wella? They were all crying. They gave us the figures. But this same APC government and many other people were against them. Today, now, some people are fighting. This subsidy is a fraud. We all know it has to go. So anyone that is saying they should not remove subsidy, you are not being realistic because we are at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom. So subsidy must go. The challenge is always, should it go now? What do we need to put in place before it go? All those are stuff we will discuss with time. But that mm. must go. It has gone. Number two, the floating of the dollar. It's a good decision. But one thing we need to understand is that there's what we call the gestation period for every policy. Mm. When a policy is made, it takes between six months to two years, all other factors being considered, before the benefit of that policy begins to come. So all these ones we think things are tough. It's not tough. Yeah. We have not started. Yeah. Well, so don't even disagree. You have not started. Because we are just less than two months in the policy now. So it is when the policy goes through its gestation process. So for the first subsidy, for instance, it's going to go higher and higher. Then when all the fuel that people that have given licenses have come in, then it can begin to go down. But don't forget that we don't have any refinery. We have not been able to have one refinery in almost 40 years. Yes. Yet an individual did one in less than four years. Another one is doing one now that will be ready in another four years. It shows that we are not ready. So for you to be expecting that government will do something for you, you are fooling yourself. Wow. The government is not there to help you. Mm. So you have to think of how to help yourself, which is where survival strategy now comes in. Uh -huh. So my own advice for individual is to understand that the principles that makes for surviving and thriving in any economy has never changed. There is nothing you are going through today that people have never gone through before. They survived it. If we survive lockdown, we'll survive this one. Mm -hmm. We just need to face reality. And the reality is twofold. 
increase your income or reduce your expenditure. But many times people always think of increasing income alone. Reducing your expenditure is a major aspect of surviving any economy because the income will not necessarily increase if you don't have value that you are offering that will demand money to flow to you. So if you are earning salary, salary will not increase. They will even most likely sack you. Yeah. Because if I'm to uh, advise an entrepreneur right now, entrepreneurs should be making the tough decisions. Tough decisions include letting go of people that you can survive without. Letting go of people so that you can be able to have a lean operation and then be able to survive as a business. So that means you that think that things are tough, that the salary is small, you most likely even lose that small salary because entrepreneurs will have to make the tough decision. So number one is reducing expenditure. And I want to deal with the major aspect of life. And please listen to me objectively if you want solution. Everyone needs to understand the majority of what you are spending money on you don't need to spend money on them. You are spending money on them because somebody has programmed you to think that way. And until we go back and face it, we are going to remain. So let's go to the major thing. Food, clothing, shelter, Education. academics. Those are the things that take money. So let's break it down. Number one, food. You say three square meters. Is three a square or a triangle? Who told you you must eat three times a day? That's part of the setup. So we have all been growing. Oh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Where? Who told you that? Who defined it such? So even, when you are, so even when you are not hungry, you are asking for food. You ask yourself, hey, where's my lunch? Are you hungry? Hey, but I've not eaten lunch. Must you eat lunch? So everybody must go sit down as a family and say, okay, in this family, from today, 011, 101, 001, whatever, you must reduce your food. Because you eat to live. You don't live to eat. Mm. If you eat once a day, you will not die. No. You're going to go through a period within two, three weeks, you will adjust. adjust. You'll be shocked that once a day is okay and you'll be healthy. Once you eat well, that's on the food aspect. On the issue of clothing, we don't need to talk too much. Most of the time, it's self-esteem issues. Mm. People don't even know what you are wearing. There's what we call the 2040 CC principle. When people are in their 20s and in their 30s, most of the decisions they make is based on what people will say, how people will feel. By the time you get to your 40s and 50s, you don't care what anybody's saying. By the time you become 60, you realize that nobody was even saying anything in the first place. You are the one setting yourself up. How many times have you done a wash shoe and nobody saw? That you now told them, you didn't see myself, you do shoe. Your husband will give you money to go to saloon. And you will return. And he will not even commend you because he has forgotten. There are many things the man is thinking of. It's not that you went to do air. So most of the things we are spending money on. All the clothes you have in your wardrobe, your bungalow is in your wardrobe. All the clothes you have in your wardrobe, how many have you worn? Okay. All through lockdown, what did you do ah. with those clothes? We are bag and shoe to match. Our destiny is not matching our bank account. Mm. We are wearing both straight. Our life is not straight. Amen. We are wearing three-piece suits. We don't have three-story three building. We need to cut down on all the waste and excesses. Then let's go to shelter. Mm. Now you have a wife. Many of us grew up in room and panel. Mm. Want to stop it. Husband, wife, and five children. Mm. We grew up in one room. We grew up in room and panel. We survived. Cutting was what our parents were using to survive. They didn't have cars, they were happy. Now you have cars, you are sad. Now you are in duplex, you are frustrated. Why? Because we have built our appetites over the years based on materialism, what people will think, what people will feel, and we have set ourselves up. You'll be amazed that in Lagos today, the illiterates are the landlord, the educated ones are the tenants. All those people we call illiterate that we think they don't have brain, they are the ones buying land, building houses. You now, you go and pack a 14 million dollar car in an 8 million dollar rented apartment. You think you're a big boy, you lack understanding. And the tenants will be calling you a guy, a, a guy ten, a landlord will be calling you a guy tenants. So we need to cut down houses. Any room you don't need is not your own. Abroad, they do fostering, they rent out room. It's time for us to begin to think, okay, this one now, do I need to move to Ibadan? Mm. Do I need to move to Ogun State? Do I need to move to a cheaper place to save my destiny and save my family? Because it's not going to get better. Do I need to move from three bedroom to two? Or from a duplex to a flat? Do we need to cut? That is what needs to happen. Then let's go to education. Before we go to education, okay. sir, <laughs> let's take a break. Please drink water. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome the one who can make time stand still forever, Mr. Kelechi Amadi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. You love that intro, I mean. Yeah. It was great. Okay, yeah. Thank we, you. We, we thank try you. like that. Thank you. Thank you. Now my question, which I feel is a cheap question. Oh, go ahead. What does ISO stand for? <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. That is it. 
I think I'll drink. <laughs> no, you're joking. I'm not joking. Clear your mind. No. Say you didn't want me. You want me now? I think I'll drink. Huh? No problem. Okay. I've always known this as ISO. I never bothered to know what it means. I know what it means, but I never really bothered to know what the acronym means. Tell me the, the, the brand of camera that I use so much so that you know, I even became an ambassador. That is that's very easy. You know. <laughs> Hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's supposed to be, yeah. I just said, let me take a give you this one. As a token of my appreciation. <laughs> Sony. Drink! No, 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 I'm not there, I'm not there. <laughs> I'm not there, I'm not there, I'm not there. You did not say final answer. Final answer. You, did not, you did not ask me if that was my final answer. You don't answer. have any choice again. It's only you know, how, many, how many cameras do they have? I'm going to drink. I gave you a very easy something. Nikon now. Yeah. Ladies and gents, welcome. The Grand Comedian of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Benga the Inca, the first! Woo! OJ right here, 7 of 7, like you already know. Benga right here, 7 of 7, like I'm beginning to know. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. It's now time for the question. You don't scare me one bit. Bata bata, I go drink. So. Okay. so. Welcome back. Dr. Olumide Emmanuel has been giving us some grass boosts that we need in the season. And some of us are already reanalyzing our expenditure, even right on the show. You need to act on these things. You were going to go into education. education. So let's go into education. Number one, who told you that you must go to school? Where did you get the idea? Who ingrained that thinking into you? A child is not supposed to go to school until the child is four years old. Mm -hmm. Because we destroyed the public education, a generation of private school owners came and started coming up with products to take money from our pocket and program us into the bondage of education. Mm -hmm. So they start talking of uh, preschool, kindergarten, uh, all kinds of names for the first four years mm -hmm. where nothing. And many people now, that's what you are spending money on. So your husband is earning 250 you are earning 80,000 or 100,000. So the total money coming to your family is 350. The school fees you are paying is 200. Where is the wisdom? Can't somebody stay at home and say, look, you know what? For the first four years of my child's life, Even I'm going five. to stay. I'm going to homeschool this child. My husband, you'll be working. I will stay at home. Many women that are working today, they are not supposed to be working. It has nothing to do with family. It's about my family. What's our family value? This is the formative stage of this student. Stay at home because what you are going to earn mm. is not even anything. You are going to earn 100. So if you are earning something big, they will might say, okay, only maybe you, are, the man will be the one to stay at home. Because we see this happening all over. So we should diffuse ourselves. Please say that again, the, sir. Because the, your voice was very loud when you were saying the women can no, stay at home. No, no, no. If, if the, the woman, woman is earning more, more mm -hmm. the man should stay at home. Uh -huh. It's happening everywhere. Take care of it's for your family. The man will now stay at home. You homeschool these people. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that has affected us is because we have this mindset of full time housewife, full time. There is nothing like that anymore in the 21st century. What because everybody, full time housewife. Because everybody can work from home now. Mm. So from home you can be a millionaire, a billionaire from your own. There are many things you can do from home. So there is nothing like, hey, I don't want to be a full time housewife. You can be a stay at home mom and run things from home and take care of the formative stage of your children. When is now time for them to go to school? The most important education is primary and secondary. Case closed. Okay. Anything after secondary school, you are fooling yourself. Majority of the university today, they are all just wasting their life away. Because oh, many of the oh, courses oh, you are studying oh. is useless. The world is changing. Yeah. The day you many enter school, by the time you graduate in five years' time, everything you have learned is useless. Over 80% of what you learn in university is useless in the real world. So what are we killing ourselves? University, you don't know any trade, you don't have anything. After you finish 22 years in school, the first letter you write is, I beg to apply. So the educational system was programmed to make you a beggar so that you can be begging for a job because we have people graduating, they can't create a job, they are seeking for a job. Once you have finished primary school and you have discovered purpose, from primary school, you can also say, okay, I'm going to catering school three years. 
or two years. I'm going to uh, tailoring school, two years. I'm going, you will now go and study to it's, develop the skill that you have discovered. And you can become a chef from at, that point. At 13. Because, yes, because see, the courses of the future, most of the courses people are studying now, they are trying to solve yes at this problem. The courses that will solve tomorrow's problem does not require four years. Why? Because certification is almost every six months. New, new things are coming up. So you need between six months to 18, two years max to be focused on the basics of any skill or career and then you continue to grow in that career. What about computer programming? If I dance the simplest one, in six Online. weeks you can start making money. Online. In six weeks. You don't need to go to spend master, four years. Um, uh, cyber security. Well, all manner of stuff going on. You can sit in your house and you'll be making millions so, make in dollars legally. There are schools in this Lagos that will teach you that free of charge. They will house you, you they will feed you, they will teach you free, they will still give you a job. And then you will pay back when you get a job over a period of time. School free in this Lagos. People are not looking for that. They want to go and do four years, and then four years that will become six years because it's the programming. Mm -hmm. Because when we're growing up, our parents want you to be a doctor, lawyer, engineer. All those courses are useless no, now. Me, what AI are, is taking what over. What I'm hearing you is, eh? we what should, law? Law is we should say, there is nothing called law, but yes, my aunt, uh, any, <laughs> they are all expired courses. Law, so, medicine, it's about AI thinking. is doing it now. What thing will take over? The law you are studying, you are studying law in Nigeria. When you get to England, you can't practice. You have to acclimatize to their own. You do their bar. You go to America and say, but the software now, AI, will be a global lawyer that has every law of every nation and understands every language. Mm -hmm. So which law are you reading? We're just wasting time. It's a programming that we have not yet understood. And we are still following that so, you know, assembly argue, line. So I'll argue with all yes. this medicine. I won't leave law. Medicine. You, and see, you actually need to go and study medicine. And see, there are AI now, there are robots now. We are in the fourth, in fact, we are in the fifth industrial revolution, and see, that I will put the machine on your body now. It will tell me everything about you from A to Z, from A to 2, the state of your kidney, your liver, your lung, and okay. the treatment you need to have. Do you know there are tablets you can take now, just one vitamin? Everything you need for your whole day is inside. Well, you sir, don't need to eat. Sir, I agree with most of the and things. And you'll be okay. So I'm not saying that mm. those things will not be needed, but the number of people okay. that are going in there will be left stranded because by the time you come out, we need 50. There are 5 million of you. You will not be stranded. So we need to begin to think of... Think differently. Yeah, That's it. Because that. the way forward is you must be a value creator. Many people are in the marketplace. They are not offering value. They are just going to collect. And what does it mean? Money flows in exchange for value. What is value? Meeting needs, solving problems, and answering questions. Mm -hmm. So you must have something you are offering your generation that they are paying you for. People don't employ for activity anymore. They employ for productivity. Uh, you know, you are an entrepreneur. Do you know how many unemployable graduates we have in Nigeria? They can't speak good English. They can't write letters without correction. They didn't go to school. And, this are the, and you are talking to them. They, they, they went to school. They went to school, but no, school didn't go through them because most of these schools, they are not teaching them anything. Okay. They are just buying handouts. I agree with you. Do you have an idea of the Nigerian University? 300 people in the class, 120 people in the class, 80 people in the class. Lecturers don't come. They don't even come. These are the realities. Why are we deceiving ourselves? You now say my child is in this, is in that, then we now say it's a and private, you're money to this pay is a private university. This is a private, this, this is a Christian, no, there's no Dr. Christian Lee, school, there's Dr. no Dr. school. Um, Mariam Maya, Maya, Maya wants to... Just jump in a bit. Okay. So, you know, I think you're my favorite guest. Every time you come, I get, <laughs> learn a lot. I just want to, maybe let's just clarify this education thing. Hmm. I know the message you're trying to put across. But I feel that there's such a generalization, some people will be confused and think that university education is a no-no. I'm trying to understand that you mean the state of our tertiary education right now. Because of the way it is, we need to look for other alternatives to educate ourselves. Okay. That's what you're saying. Now, what I'm saying is this. Mm -hmm. Because, let me just add this, yeah. because this AI you're talking about, those people that have created this, they went to university. Now, so listen, please listen. I have two master's degrees, I have two PhD. not all... I went to school, so I have two PhD. So I'm not saying that you should not go to school. I'm not saying that you don't need education. But when you are going to school, be going to school because you really need it. Be going to school because it is important to help you to become who you are supposed to be. Many people already discover what they are supposed to do. I'm supposed to be a fashion designer, but because of this programming, you want to first go and do medicine. Yes, sir. Then you now come back to that. You want to first do architecture first. That is the deception I'm talking about. Don't, and then when you are going to school, don't go to school based on the programming of the courses you think will help you to be marketable. Go to school to study the courses that will help you to solve the problem of the world you are living in. Mm -hmm. Many of us are mirroring our parents' dreams and desires. That's why the popular courses 
At now, if, you, if someone, if, do you know that in our own days, if you have told your mom you want to be an actor, an actress, they will have said you are a prostitute, they will have said you are doing this, you want to be a footballer, they will say, hey, God, oh, who did this to me? But now, we are in the same case now. If a child comes to you now and says, mom, I want to be a drone pilot, will you agree? If your child comes to you today now and says, I want to go into robotics, will you agree? I want to be a graphic artist, will you agree? Because in your consciousness, mm. being a graphic artist is not a career, it's a, a graphic mm. artist, they draw picture. That is the program that we have all been programmed in. The colonial masters messed us up and we are messing up the next generation. Hmm. Because we, if, no, think of it. Every time you ask a child, what do you want to become? Majority of them tell you they want to become something that requires them to go and get a job from somebody to get a salary. That's the programming I'm talking about. We have been programmed to go to school. The education sector as it is today was not set up to help you. It was set up to create workers for the marketplace of for capitalists. So, so it's for us to now know that, look, I'm not going to be a pawn in that. I'm going to go to school to learn to earn, mm. to learn to develop mm. my skill mm. so that I can be skillful to be able to offer value so that money will flow. Mm. Okay. Toby wanted to throw in something. Yes. Are you, are you going to Next. education or you want to, you're yeah, doing... He has inched on it because, you know, sometimes I feel like this programming that you speak about has been so in-depth in our hearts yeah. and it's difficult to step away from. So for our viewers today, step by step, how do you advise that we can move away from this programming that generations have passed down to us, understanding that um, it's important to go to school? It takes a lot. So I'm not going to tell you it's easy. I'm still going through it in different areas of my life. I still have to sit down with my wife and children. Yeah, I still have to sit down with my family. I still have to sit down with my, I still have to sit down with my family and say, look, this is not going to work. We're not going to do this. Why are we doing this? I still do that till date. And it's just the reality. So number one, if things are ideal, and we don't live in an ideal world, if things are ideal, when children are born into a family, they are supposed to, born, to be born into a functional family where the parents themselves have understood themselves and they understand parenting. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yes. children are giving birth to children. Yes. So dysfunctional <laughs> people are marrying each other, raising mm -hmm. children in dysfunctional areas where, where it's a generation of dysfunctional people. Exactly. The parents themselves don't even know better. Mm -hmm. They are confused. Mm -hmm. They don't understand. So mm. if it was an ideal situation, you would have known that this child that is being given to me, I have been given the custody. It's not my child. I've been given the custody of this child for 18 years. And the person that gave me this child has a template for this child before the child was sent to me. So I'm supposed to go back to the creator. Say, this child you gave to me, what is the template? What's the purpose for this, for child? this child? And then I'm supposed to yeah. be sensitive and observant to identify the traits in this child because you can't raise every child the same, same way. way. So that I can now channel that child in that direction and help that child to discover himself or herself. So that by the time the child is 18, the person is a full-blown adult that can move on on his or her own. But because we don't have that system and many families are dysfunctional, we are still raising people at 25, at 30, 28. People are seeing their sure. parents' house asking for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Stay in one room without paying, and they say it's my parents. And we don't know that. When you look at the you Western world, as a by 18, they send you out. You are gone. Because well, anything that, yes, you start paying 16. anything after 18 mm -hmm. is in the podcast. You have only 18 16. years. 16. Yeah. 16. So, so, but because we don't have that, at 23, we are still following them to interview. At 25, we are still trying to, and that is why we are raising children. Look at marriages today. A lot of men are children. A lot of women are children. It's because they have been mummified all their life. They have not been allowed mm. to face the reality of life. Uh, so it's a continuous fight. cycle. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's, so how it's do so, we step away from that? So it's for all of us that are listening to me right now to begin to realize that, number one, we can do things differently. Yeah. Go back, identify the things you are doing wrong, identify the areas of deficiency, and come together as a family to make a commitment to say this and this and this are things that will begin to change, e.g. food. In my family now, for many years, three square meal has never been part of my son, even my 10 year plus, the last baby of the house, cannot come and say that where's my lunch. He can't say that. For, from six years old, he, he, he can't say that. He only comes, I'm hungry. When you are hungry, you come for food. We give you food. If you are not hungry, no food. Sometimes he will not eat till two. You will say, I break I say, no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm not hungry. Oh. I'm like, wow. It mm. works. So it's a process. You have to go on little by little. By little, by little by little. You still are hungry program. five times a day. No, if they are hungry five times a day, you give them food five times a day. Because you don't raise them with poverty mentality. Okay. But let them understand that food is when I'm hungry. hungry. Not that I must eat, eat because there is a timetable that somebody has set for me. Yeah. Is that yeah. so? We are not talking of poverty mentality here. Mm. 
Do you understand? We are talking of helping them to understand so that when it's time for them to be able, because there are businesses you will do where you will be on your feet for 10 hours. It's not food you are thinking of. If you don't raise them like that, they won't be able to survive in that atmosphere. Yeah. Where they need to now be disciplined. I have someone that you say I'm busy. Can now use food to discipline. I cannot... Somebody can use food to do all kinds of things to them because they are now hungry. Yeah. So those are the things that so we need to learn what mm. are the things we have done wrong. And then number two, we need to begin to make changes where necessary. And I say it's marriage is one of the most blessed experience and one of the most cost experience of life. Mm. If you marry the wrong person, it can be all this we are saying now. If your partner does not support, okay. it can mm. be trouble. I've just dealt with the case this week of a man crying, say, What do I do? These children are still children. I'm telling them that by night they should be at home. They are telling me that what do you mean by now? That's when the party will start. And that they will be back by 11, 12. And my wife said, hey, leave them alone. So that's why the problem. I said, my brother, I can't help you. <laughs> as long as your wife and yeah, you are not on the same page, it's not children issue we should be talking We should be discussing value system between two of you. It's the marriage can never that work. you need to fix. And they are girls. So girls plus girls, three against one. You are going to lose the battle. So just mm. <laughs> receive grace. So those, so those are the things we need to begin to do. Identify the problems, identify the gaps, and then make a commitment to begin to do it. And when you fail, don't be discouraged. Put help support system around you to help you to say, okay, ah, we said we are going to do, why are we not doing this? It's the same thing with savings. It's the same thing with a lot of other aspects of our lives. So what I will say to people is reduce expenditure. That's what I've dealt with now, mm. which is let's look at the hard facts. Housing, education, there are many things to reduce there expenditure. Too. Then the next thing to do is now to increase your income. Mm. So you now see now, that one is not easy to do if you don't have value, if you don't have skill, if you don't have knowledge. So sometimes you might first have to find the gap. Yes. As I'm sitting here right now, as far back as 2001, I already had a folder. And I renewed that folder maybe every two, two years as I was growing up on things to reduce. So if for any reason I have need to reduce anything now, I don't need, I'll just go, ah, yeah, this one goes, this one goes. Because I know every money I spend every month in the family, I know that, okay, what am I doing with cable? Wow, well, cable gone. You don't need to be paying any money for any cable station or like a subscription every month when I can use the internet to still do the same thing. Do you understand? Because you, have, you are paying for my uh, internet data. You are paying for cable. The things you are watching on cable, you can now watch. So all those things you notice, okay, we put on this generator from this one, okay, no, no more eight hours, now six hours. You have those, for, there was a point in my life, we in our family, it. we did not, we used to, we, we buy bottled water. For two years, we didn't do that. At a point years ago. Why? Because I say, oh, yeah, no more. But because we knew how much was going, going coming to the soul. Yeah. Everybody should sit down and face reality. Now, think about it. If all of you came here now with low cuts and passing, will it kill you? You Nada. still look beautiful. Then. But all no, this don't air, mind. It's them, not me. Yeah, no, I, of course. <laughs> but all this air you put are buying, now you are telling me you see, you still going to buy shoes. If you, I love shoes, I love yeah, shoes. Looking it's at what is putting people in trouble. You have two legs. You want to buy shoes. This is like 500,000. Uh, 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 does not spend on hair. Yeah. Yeah. She spends on shoes. She spends on shoes. So, and, and no, you love shoes. If you love shoes, design shoes, manufacture shoes, sell shoes. I like shoe, that. Yeah. Mm. that. Then begin to make money for so that the shoe you are wearing is from the profit of the profit, the yeah. grandchild of the money. You can now wear any shoe you want to wear. Not that they add any money. You go and use the wear shoe. Buy shoes that all of you sitting here now, nobody has ever seen. Sir, you what, we have since you have been on this, but nobody <laughs> no, no, they can except see the day that the you put mention where guys they will now show it. So you we, are just fooling yourself. We have just about three more minutes, and we need to make money. People sir. are busy so with their lives. They are talking. Money. Yes, yes, we need to make money because some people, no, there is no reduction. They have reduced everything that can be reduced. Mm -hmm. So mm. the only goal is I need more. Make. So, so how can they make more money in this economy? Money only flows in exchange for value. So number one. Whatever you are doing right now, begin to think of how you can make more money from what you are already doing. You see, in business, we have what we call forward integration and backward integration. There are many things that you are doing right now that there are still many more money making inside it. So you sit down and observe your product and your service. So, okay, this product, is there another way to make money? So, e.g., you have a product, the customer comes and buys the product once. The customer will not need to come again. So, for instance, if you are selling food now, they can come every day. They can come twice a day. But if you are selling a shoe, if the customer has bought shoe once, they will most likely not come back again. I say not that brand. Uh, oh. So that means that that's one customer. What do I need to do to get more okay. money from that customer? So I have to now think of something else to do. Because the two ways to grow on that side is, number one, begin to come up with new products for your existing customers. So the customers you already have one now. Okay, they have bought so what else can I give to them? Because they are already your customer. So what else? So the person bought the car from you. Can you say, okay, we now do car wash, oh? We now do service, you know. We now sell tires. So, so you come up with other products that you can give to the existing customer. 
Then the product you already have now, you now need to take existing product to new customers that don't know you at all. So, and social media will help you do that a lot. So, instead of going online just to be able to be looking at who is breaking who's person's ass, who dumped who, you go online to begin to look at the portals of people that desire what you have and begin to trade and say, I have this, I'm doing sales, I'm doing discount, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. There's referral. If you bring this person, you will get this. So, those are the things you need to begin to do. And once you begin to explore these two, you'll be amazed. Those two things I've said to you has helped people to be billionaires over and over again. Existing product to new customers and new product to existing customers. Those are two master keys for making an ending wealth anywhere in the world. Wow. Wow. As usual. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we have just 30 seconds left on the show. Please, um, thank you so much, Dr. Lemide Emmanuel. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for giving us a lot to chew on. Yes. On this Wednesday. I am sure everybody in the studio is looking at you like, what just happened? So All of us have as been. As usual. Just yeah. Right now. So we're going to go and listen again. Please do the same. And Don't be too lazy. <laughs> please um reduce your expenses increase I, I actually did a video about this it looked like you had told me but we know I, i've been collecting it from the source <laughs> thank you so much for coming again thank you ladies for an amazing show um guys go on social media watch again and again and so we'll see you tomorrow remain blessed bye